This is the exact setting of America's newest, least understood epidemic. Even if you've already been following news reports about the impacts of vaping, you may be shocked to learn how it's already hooked a new generation. I sat down with six students from a variety of backgrounds to get the unvarnished truth about what's going on right now. Okay, so question, if I randomly selected a group of 20 students, how many do you think vape? 10. At least. Yeah. 10 to 50. I think closer, like 16 out of the 20. Would you say that a new generation has been hooked? Absolutely. Yes. Uh -huh. No doubt. Like teen smoking was getting close to being like eliminated. It was almost gone, but these companies are smart and they know how to get kids hooked. They know what like they went they, what they want to see, and that's all these different flavors. Like it's a big marketing brand. I mean, there's also the colorful packaging, mm -hmm. not only the flavors that attracts kids. I think. Yeah, like some of the packaging will have like a lemon like surfboarding or just something random that's like catches your eye. Like a pack of candy. I think it's just because it's something new and kids have never seen it. Like when any device is introduced, it's like, whoa, that's new. It's like a new toy. You want to mess around with it. In my freshman year, there was, well, like I had one or two friends do it, but it was still mostly frowned upon. A lot of people would be like, oh, you're doing that, but that's kind of gross. And my sophomore and like now my junior year, it's almost like, it's almost like they're new iPhones. Like everyone's like, wants to get the new device. Everyone's like, look at this. And it's like comparing colors and like flavors. It's kind of, it's weird how normalized it is now in high school. Yeah. It's weird now. So honestly, if you're out in a party and someone says no to it, the, the common like reaction is really? You don't smoke? It's so rare to hear someone say, like, I completely don't smoke at all. Like it's either like, oh, like I smoke weed, but I don't smoke nicotine, like that's not my thing. Or it's like, oh, I only smack nicotine. I don't do weed. It's always like one or the other. It's rarely none. So there's just not the stigma. Mm-hmm. Not really, no. I mean, a f there's like people who will like chew through like two or three jewel pods or like, like fill their devices like a couple times a day. And they're obviously seen as like, whoa, they're like a, I think that we use like the term fiend where they just nonstop whenever they have like any free time, they'd rather be breathing in vape than air. Any money. And it's scary to think that our kind of generation and our, our school years are, we're kind of the guinea pigs for these new devices. We're the people who are kind of getting tested on to see these results of what's going to happen to our friends, our peers. We don't know what's going to happen. Do you think that the vaping companies know what they're doing? 100%. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, yeah, there's no way it's, th there might have been some good intentions where they're trying to wean like adults off cigarettes, but like now once they've seen it blown up, there's no way they're not going to cash out this incredible opportunity to make probably millions off of high schoolers who just want their Nick fix. I don't think an adult would want something that tastes like sour apple all the time or something like that. News reports connecting vaping to lung diseases and even deaths have begun to penetrate the consciousness of many Americans. And while the statistics might be a good deterrent for many adults, teens say it just doesn't hit them the same way. So with all these cautions, with all these tales of bad health, um, even people dying from vaping related disease, has that had an effect on the use in high school? No. Not at all. Kid, the new minimally. Oh, Kids always want to be proven wrong and be like, no, that's not from that. That's, yeah. They are always in denial and they can't, that can't happen to me, like that won't. It's almost like we're self-destructive to a point. It's, I know one of my friends, she had to go to the ER and like I'm at like 100% oxygen saturation, that's where most people are. Uh, she was down at like 50. And I walked, like I was walking around and then I saw her at a party and she was still vaping. After the doctor had said like, you're pretty much like, this is life or death now for her. And she's still choosing to partake in smoking. And then it's also where, like when you're having conversation and once talking about a sport that they're playing, they're like, oh yeah, he can't run as good. Like he doesn't stop smoking. Like that's why he gets so like out of breath. It's just so crazy that an athlete that needs to have the best lungs possible to keep up with the game, like refuses to because they have an addiction. Yeah, like with the athlete thing, I used to, I used to like play football my freshman year, like once it kind of started getting going with all the vaping stuff and people who, I'd walk in the bathroom and just see him just 
inhaling like pod after pod pretty much like they'd finish two in a day and brag about it like at practice like the first week of summer conditioning they were like sprinting in front of everyone they were doing great and then I was pretty out of shape freshman year I would start beating them throughout the like throughout the season it would just be kind of one of these weird things where this person who used to be like the fast on the team best athlete they, they wouldn't accept it but you would you could tell even if like you didn't know that they were vaping that something wasn't right they would just slow down I've seen people actually shake when it's like 95 degrees out and they're like shaking just a little bit and you're like, like, what's wrong? And they're like, oh, nothing. I, I need Nick. I need Nick. What would you guys say you've heard that causes you alarm? I feel like we've always known that cigarettes have an extent of harm that they can do to you, like extreme. But no one's really known about Julian just because it hasn't been around as long as cigarettes have. We can see that people have been smoking for years cigarettes and we see what happens. But for Julian, since it's so new, no one really knows um, no one really knows the extent of the harm of it. But I've been hearing of people coughing up blood, people are throwing up, people are going to the ER. It's really scary to think about. Indeed, it's it's like even when they first came out, everyone knew that they can't be good for you but there was no science saying that they were worse than cigarettes or better. It's just, it was kind of an unknown. So I think people like were comforted by the fact that there was nothing saying they were bad. So why not give it a shot? I feel like if we had like, if the FDA had gotten a hold of them before they were put on shelves, like there was testing, it might've like impacted how many people have actually picked it up as a habit. In 2011, just one and a half percent of teens reported vaping. Now, official reports put that number closer to 30%. But these teens explained why that number still seems far off. Like, let's just say your teachers decided to check everyone's bag in class one day. How many devices do you think they'd find? Ooh. Let alone one person could have three or four on them of different types of stuff. So it's, it's honestly... It'd be hard to even try to think of a number. Yeah. And some people may not keep them in their backpacks, but you're probably going to find one in their car if it's on their backpack, or you're probably going to find one in their room if it's not at school. Yeah. A lot, of, yeah. A lot of people will roll it into the band of their underwear because you're not allowed to be pat down at high school. They can only search your bag. I've known people who have been selling stuff and using it at the same time that the person has had $500. 20 things for nicotine, 20 things for uh, marijuana, and they'll just walk around school, they'll go to a bathroom, see someone that like, looks shaky, I have this for 20 bucks, and then they'll just like keep, like, it's crazy. So you'd say there's also a market on campus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. indeed. Oh, for sure. Like if you walk into the boys' bathroom and there's more than four people, my guess is one of them's selling, the other one's buying, one of them's using, and then you just like, and there'll be like four to five people in one stall. Really nonchalant too, I'll walk in and just see two people like clap hands and then you catch a glimpse, suddenly the guy, some of the guy has 20 bucks in his hand and the other guy has a device in his hand. Like, just like that. No yeah. words, no nothing. Or like a cart, it won't even be like the whole thing, it'll just be like a little cart. Yeah, it's just a handshake. If you like, like, pat down, yeah, search yeah, cars, like search lockers, search mm -hmm. backpack, you'd probably the majority of the school. Mm -hmm. It's, it's more rare to find someone who doesn't actively vape at school than not. Yeah. And I feel like for a lot of adults, this would probably be really shocking because they're not aware of how common it is. It's like everyone knows at this point that it's a problem, but I don't think they know that the majority of the population of students at our schools and high schools do own nicotine devices. I feel like we're uh, raising a future generation of sleight of hand magicians that can they'll yeah, be in their mouth, they'll take a hit, and all of a sudden the smoke's gone out of their hands. It's like it's incredible to see people work. Like I've known people where they put it under their tongue and will be able to talk perfectly, then just switch and just move it as they're getting searched and stuff. It's crazy. Many people know how much tobacco or marijuana costs, but the world of vaping has created an entirely new market. And the prices the products fetch is far more than you might think. I don't think parents know how much kids are actually spending on the devices itself. Like, the, the little jewel pods are how much? 30, it depends. Yeah, I know. Like, it's like 15 to 20 a pod. And then the marijuana ones can be from like 25, 35. And kids are going through those daily, sometimes like weekly. That's two weeks, that's 60 bucks. 
Would you say that that's like a priority for people? Uh, oh, yeah. It's definitely a priority. And it's crazy how they get the money. Like they'll go like, they'll do whatever they can to get money like. It's their new lifestyle. Yeah. It's their new lifestyle that they have to upkeep and they have to keep getting money to fund into this addiction that they have. It used to be if I like left my wallet in a classroom, I was pretty confident I could go back and like, oh, like my teacher would have, like someone would have handed it to my teacher. But at this point, like if a kid needs to get his fix, he'll take anything from it. He'll be like, or he'll give it to me and just say like, oh, the money was missing. I've also seen people um, go up to their parents and be like, oh, I need money for homecoming tickets. That's yeah. 40 bucks for Definitely. your pods or your cartridge. It's easy money to get because your parents are, oh, the homecoming, like you're going to have fun at that, but they don't go to homecoming. Have your parents tried to talk to you about vaping? Yeah, my mom asked me, she's like, do you know what vaping is? Like, kind of like to try to like tell me what, about what's like the do's and don'ts about it. I think it was like being my sophomore year and I schooled around everything. I was like, that's what, like, I know this, 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 like, it's, I never like sat down and researched it. It's just, you pick it up from people. Like, you know how much, like how many hits you can get off this. What's in that? What does that do? Like, what's contained in this device? What's supposed to go in this device? Like, eventually like you can just look at something like, just kind of like, tell the specs of it. It's like kids are like masters of vaping at this point. They know. Mm -hmm. They know more than an adult. And yeah, like you can look at it and see if like, oh, that's nicotine, that's marijuana. You could just tell the difference between everything. And it's easy to check your parents. Like when it started off with the jewels, when your mom or your dad would find it in your room, you just go, oh, it's a flash drive. And they're like, oh, okay. Like they wouldn't, like they wouldn't second guess it just because they've only known that it's alcohol, cigarettes, and marijuana is bad for you. Like, they've never seen these devices, so it's really easy to trick a parent, which is part of the problem that parents don't, aren't aware. Like it or not, that's the situation right now for high school students in America. The landscape they're navigating is far different from what any previous generation has experienced. And while the health effects have only begun to present themselves, where the epidemic goes next is up to all of us.